I'll be all around in the dark. I'll be everywhere, wherever you can look. Wherever there's a fight so hungry people can eat, I'll be there. Wherever there's a cop beating up a guy, I'll be there. I'll be in the way guys yell when they're mad. I'll be in the way kids laugh when they're hungry and they know supper's ready. And when the people are eating the stuff they raise and living in the houses they build, I'll be there too. I don't understand it, Tom. Me neither, Ma, but just something I've been thinking about. Otra vez en la década del 30, con Henry Fonda como protagonista. Pero esta vez veremos como el crack del 29 hizo que miles de granjeros de Oklahoma se desplacen hacia la gran tierra de California. Esto se debió a un fenómeno climático que impedía el cultivo de las tierras. Fonda hará el rol protagónico como un ex convicto de nombre Tom Scholl que busca volver a su casa tras pasar cuatro años en prisión. You're about to bust a gut to know what I done, ain't you? Well, I had a guy to let you down. Homicide. Es así como nuestro protagonista se encuentra con el pastor del pueblo y con un antiguo vecino que le cuenta que su familia ya no vive en su casa. Que están a punto de irse a California. Además le explica que anduvo pasando con el pueblo. Muley. Where's my folks, Muley? Why, well, they gone. I know they're gone, but where are they gone? It's Muley Graves. You remember the preacher, don't you? I ain't no preacher anymore. All right, you remember the man, don't you? Glad to see you again. Glad to see you. Now, where are my folks? They gone. They gone to your Uncle John's. The whole crowd of them, two weeks ago. But they can't stay there either, because John's got his notice to get off. What happened? How come they got to get off? We lived here 50 years, same place. Everybody's got to get off. Everybody's leaving, going out to California. Your folks, my folks, everybody's folks. Everybody except me. I ain't getting off. Who done it? Listen, that's someone who done it. The dusters, they started anyways. Blowing like this year after year, blowing the land away, blowing the crops away. Es así como se encuentra con su familia, que posee un cartel en el cual buscan 800 trabajadores para recolectar duraznos. La familia se va con todas sus cosas y su esperanza. Aunque el primero que no soporta la situación es el abuelo, que decide ir a un mejor lugar. This here is William James Joad, died of a stroke. Old, old man. His folks buried him because they got no money to pay for funeral. Nobody killed him, just a stroke and he died. I think the best we leave something like this on him and unless somebody digs him up and makes out he was killed. Mm. Looks like a lot of times the government's got more interest in a dead man than a live one. Not be so lonesome, knowing his name's there with him. Not just an old fella lonesome underground. En su camino se encuentran con personas de su misma condición que vuelven. El motivo, 
Tan solo no hay trabajo para todos. Y el granjero explica la ley de la oferta y la demanda. Same yellow handbill. 800 pickers wanted. All right, the man wants 800 men. So he prints 5,000 handbills and maybe 20,000 people see him. And maybe 2 or 3,000 people start west on account of that handbill. 2 or 3,000 people that are crazy with worry heading out for 800 jobs. Now, does that make sense? Say, what are you, a troublemaker? You sure you ain't one of them labor fakes? I, I swear I ain't, mister. Oh, don't you go around here trying to stir up any trouble. I tried to tell you folks what it took me a year to find out. Took two kids dead. Took my wife dead to show me. But nobody could tell me neither. I can't tell you about them little fellas laying in the tent with their bellies swelled out and just skin over their bones. A shivering and a whining like pups, and me a running around looking for work. Tras recorrer la mitad de la ruta 66, pasando de estado a estado desde Oklahoma hasta California, después de recorrer 1600 kilómetros, llegaron. There she is. There she is. I never knew there was anything like her. Will you look at her? Look at her, John. Look how pretty and green it is, Winfield. One of them's orange trees, John. They look like orange trees to me. Well, they sure are pretty, whatever they are. Indeed. <laughs> look at them haystacks. Aunque la abuela decidió acompañar a su marido al más allá. You sick, Ma? You say we got across? Look. Oh, thank God. And we're still together, most of us. Didn't you sleep none? Was Grandma bad? Grandma's dead. When? Since before they stopped us last night. That's why you didn't want them to look, huh? Well, I was afraid they'd stop us and we wouldn't get across. I told Grandma. I told her when she was dying. I told her the family had to get across. I told her we couldn't take no chance on being stopped. Ya en California, descubren que no hay trabajo para todos y tienen que trabajar por 5 centavos de dólar de balde. Vaya a saber lo que valía 5 centavos en esa época. Look, Tom. We come here to work. They tell us it's going to be 5 cents, but there's a whole lot of us. So the man says 2 and a half cents. Well, a fella can't even eat on that, and if he's got kids. So he says we won't take it. So they drive us off. Now they're paying you 5 cents. But if they bust this strike, you think they'll pay five? No, paying five now. They'll get two and a half cents just the minute we're gone. You know what that is. One ton of peaches picked and carried for a dollar. That way you can't even buy enough food to keep you alive. Tell them to come out with us, Tom. Them peaches is ripe. Two days out and they'll pay us, pay us all five, maybe seven. Ahí nuestro protagonista se encuentra con el pastor, ahora es un huelguista y en esas cosas que lleva el guión termina muerto y con la familia escapando. Boy, he's dead. He's good and dead. Did you see the fellow that done it? I ain't sure, but I caught him one across the face. And he left a trademark he won't be able to get rid of in a hurry. Es así como encuentran un refugio del gobierno y deciden vivir una vida de lujo a cambio de trabajo. You'll be a number four sanitary unit. What's that? Mm, toilet, showers, wash tubs. You mean we'll have wash tubs with running water? <laughs> yes, ma'am. A camp committee call on you in the morning, get you fixed. Cops? No, no cops. No people here elect their own cops. The ladies committee call on you, ma'am. Tell you about the children, the schools, and sanitary unit, and who takes care of them. Will you come inside and sign up? The Grave of Wolf es una gran película de John Ford, con grandes tomas y la increíble actuación de Henry Fonda, y fue la antecesora de Tobacco Row. Lo que sí, el final de la película es mucho más optimista que el del libro, porque siempre es, fue y será así Hollywood. He was a good man. I've been thinking about us, too. About our people living like pigs and 
good, rich land laying fallow. Or maybe one guy with a million acres and a hundred thousand farmers starving. And I've been wondering if all our folks got together and yelled. Oh, Tommy, they'd drive you out and cut you down just like they've done to Casey. They'd drive me anyways. Sooner or later they'd get me for one thing, if not for another. Until then. Tommy, you're not even to kill nobody. No, Ma, not that. That ain't it. It's just, well, as long as I'm an outlaw anyways, maybe I can do something. Maybe I can just find out something. Just scrounge around and maybe find out what it is that's wrong. And see if there's something that can be done about it. Y es así que con un mensaje esperanzador, la familia se va a buscar un lugar para vivir. Soy Agustín López y esta ha sido una vieja. Like we was lost and nobody cared. You're the one that keeps us going, Ma. I ain't no good no more, and I know it. Seems like I spend all my time these days thinking how it used to be. Thinking of home. I ain't never going to see it no more. Well, Pa, a woman can change better than a man. A man lives sort of, well, in jerks. 